Praise God. Turn with me to Psalm chapter 4. Uh, beloved, it's another one of these things. I, I, I'm sticking it on Brother Kent. I don't really have a message uh, or a title, but I'd like to challenge the pastors. Uh, they, there's a brave man from Kentucky. Uh, anybody heard the name Rand Paul? Rand Paul is calling for preachers everywhere from the pulpits to preach out against the sins of this nation, against the sins of the corruptness in the government, and the one that everybody's running scared of. Homosexuality, baby murder. Uh, beloved, when you have people in the very top echelon of our government praising homosexuality as an alternate lifestyle, when you've got them taking your tax dollars to murder our babies, this must be spoken out against because God will hold the church responsible. Truth is the resistance. And as long as there's breath in me, I don't fear taxes. I don't fear them taking our tax exemption. We're not. We don't make enough money to be to worry about anyway. So they're not going to hurt us. They can lock me up unless they cut my tongue out. I'll still proclaim the truth. And if they cut my tongue out, I'll learn sign language. They're not going to stop me from proclaiming the truth. I'm not going to be bullied by a devilish government or by a hellish society that is in the political correctness when God never was. God says that the things that we're doing, if it was not, if it was bad enough, the stances we're taking with Israel, and they are bad enough to bring down our country, and we are. We see flooding everywhere. We've had a cool summer down here in Alabama. It should be in the 90s right now, but it's been raining since Christmas. The weather is, is kind of wreaking havoc all over, and we are causing a lot of problems in Israel. But just the sins of the nation, just the sins, the sexual sins, the forbidden sins of the nation that America is making billions of dollars off of. Remember, I said it before, used to, we had a lot of exports. Our number one export is smut. Our number one export is pornography of all kinds. If you can imagine it in your brains, they film it. And for lack of, for the little ears, I'm not going to get too in depth, but there is nothing left off the market, not even the beast of the field. Just like the Bible told us about. If it's in the world today, it has been warned of here first. God would not have the Holy Spirit warn you about bestiality if bestiality was not a problem. Nothing overlooks the eyes of an all-seeing God. And you know what? They might try to silence you. Rand Paul challenged preachers around the United States to speak up from the pulpits against these sins that they're trying to sweep under the rug, against these sins that they're trying to hail as an alternate lifestyle and teach our kids in school. I, for one, will speak out against them. I'm against them. I hate everything that my God hates. He hates homosexuality. He hates bestiality. He hates incense, he, or incest. He hates the wickedness. Look it up. Nowhere, nowhere does the Scripture say love the sinner and hate, uh, and hate the sin. The Bible said God hates those that do wickedness. We need to get back to the Bible and get back to what the God that we're serving has to say because 21st century lukewarm church society has totally twisted it around. Brother Kent was all over it this morning, and, that, and, and I know that's the message for us because that is where he sent me. So before we get into this message that the world hates, and before we get into this message that the IRS could audit me because, hey, I'm conservative, and, and before we get into this message that they could snatch our right to preach the gospel, I'm going to ask for an, I'm going to a vote from the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, protection. Because he will give you a platform. He will hold your hand. He made you. He'll carry you. He'll preserve you. He'll protect you. I believe it in Christ's high holy name. Amen. Psalm chapter 4 is where we're going to pick up. Because we're going to ask God to look out after this church. That message that you just preach is going to reach way out from beyond this room. These, these messages always do. We don't have to see the benefit. We don't have to see the results. We just have to be faithful. You can preach in the middle of the woods and there's a hermit be somewhere on the other side of that hill listening to you. Speak the truth. Never be silent. 
No matter the crowd, no matter the situation, no matter if you're the only one standing up for the right and God forbid they stone you and smote you and beat you and kill you, stand fast and speak the truth anyway. Because you've got a reward waiting on you, I promise you, and this ain't it. This ain't it. How much can you have here? How much do you have? Are you happier? Are you happier? God has given us a business. I, my, my business has took off tenfold. Am I happier? No. Am I complaining? No. I'm just as happy with nothing as I am with. I'm content in whatever state I'm in. He's first in my life. The only thing I become is busier. That's it. That's it. Nothing on this world besides the brothers and sisters in Christ that God has given you prospers you anything. Except maybe you might get the opportunity to warn one, to warn one person and keep one person, one person out of the pits of hell. You've had a successful ministry. Psalm 4. Hear me when I cry, or when I call, O God, of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O oh, you sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing or sinful lifestyles? But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. When you're laying there in your bed at night, commune with your own heart. Examine your own selves. When you're praying to God, look at yourself and ask yourself, when you, you're, are you heart of hearts? Are you in the right? Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. What is our sacrifices of righteousness? Offering praise, offering thanksgiving, spreading the gospel message with the fruit of our lips. That's, that's, what, that's our sacrifices. Our bodies. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Amen. What do you do with your bodies all day long? Yeah, you work. Are you bringing glory to God? There be many that say, Who? will show us any good. Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us, or show yourself to us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart, more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. They had abundance in material things, but God has put the gladness in mine heart. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Thank you, Father God, in the blessed name of Jesus. It doesn't matter how many arms you've got, and I've got them. It doesn't matter how much food you've put up, and I've got it. But only God is going to let me dwell in safety. Amen. Only God will preserve you. Your hairs on your head are numbered. The appointed time for the culmination of all things has a date. You've got to trust in God. We've got to trust in God. We've got to follow God. And we've got to start proclaiming the truth now more than ever because the truth ain't out there. There was a preacher on the last night. Give me now your money. Go to the phone now. There's a seed needs to be sown. 500 of you blaspheming whatever smack of his hand. And you got the owners of TBN sitting over there nodding their little heads in agreements. With their gluttonous bellies hanging to their knees. Yes, give you give your money. When did the seed turn into money? When the Bible said the seed is the word of God. When did they turn it into money? And when are all these sleepy walking around with their eyes closed? 21st century lukewarm Christians going to wake up out of the trap that they're in because they got them on a fast track to hell. When the blind lead the blind, guess what? They both fall in the ditch because you have the word of God that warns you to flee from that but they sit there like that and they look at their neighbor tell somebody oh tell somebody so you better tell somebody the word of God he's coming back vengeance is in his heart when he comes back beloved Amen. 
It's going to be bad. It's going to be a time. The Bible says in the book of Amos, the woe to us that desire the day of the Lord. Do I want my Savior to come back and call his bride away? Amen, I do. But woe to you that desire the day of the Lord. Why? Because it's going to be a day of darkness and not of light. There ain't going to be nowhere you can flee. A bear's going to take off after you. You're going to run into the house and a viper's going to bite you. No escape. That day's fast upon us. That day, that day, we are so close to an antichrist regime. Every car built past 2014, they're trying to put those little boxes in them. Oh, they say it's if you have a wreck, they can check out the wreck. That thing will monitor your speech. It'll monitor your speed. It'll know where you go and how long you stay. It is just another tracking device to clamp down on you. And guess what? People will scoop it right up. Because I don't know how many ignorance have plugged those progressive snapshots in their ashtray charger. And it's recording everything you do, everywhere you go. Oh, it's for your, you're going to save $20 on your insurance if you drive safe. Don't be deceived, beloved. Everything in this in the society right now through technology, your iPhones, they track you on your iPhones when they're turned off. They still emit a signal. I know because me and my wife Google and go down the road and this hers is flashing and it's turned off. They know where you're at all the time. They know what you're buying. Wake up. The time is right for the Antichrist to bust on the scenes. This ain't something that's going to be way off in the future like it was when I was a kid. Now the future's here. This is something that's going to happen now. How do we know? Look in... Uh, before we go there, before we go to 1 Kings, go back to the book of Le Leviticus because we're going to have to get an idea of what God calls these things that the man in the office is saying, hey, it's an alternate lifestyle. Our teachers in our schools are teaching this garbage to our children. They're telling them it's okay and even encouraging the behavior. And if you make a statement against it, oh, you bigoted hate monger, you're bigoted, you're racist, you're a hater, hate crime, you think I'm joking. It's already took place in Canada. It's already took place in Europe. It's already taken place in Britain. And it's taken place in America because the pulpits are not speaking out. And those that won't use the pulpits to proclaim the dangers and the truths, one of that rattlesnake in the grass, guess what? Your pulpit might be used for something else, but it ain't going to be for converting anybody or getting anybody out of, the, out of the snares, I can tell you that. Everybody's got this funny ideal about 21st century Christianity. Everything is to be done to, to the edification of the body. People say, yeah, to the edification of the body. You know what edification of the body means? It means make it stronger. You eat carrots because it helps your eyes. You eat spinach because it helps your muscles. You eat, you eat food because your body needs it, not necessarily because it tastes good. The stuff that tastes good is going to kill you. Right? I could eat pan pizza 24-7. You'd have to dress me in stripes to tell whether I was walking or rolling. And though it tastes so good going down, it's going to kill me. Do I like Brussels sprouts? No, but they're good for me. These things in the Word of God that hurts, that'll step on your toes, that'll smack you right in the face, that'll make your knees knock together, but it'll save your souls. The late great Adrian Rogers used to say all the time, I'd rather tell you a, a, a truth that hurts and then heals as a lie that comforts and then kills. These auditoriums around this whole world, preachers, evangelists, you can't even watch one on TV. There's very few that come on that's worth watching anymore. Best one that there was on there, Daryl Dumas, they cut him. They got rid of him. He was a little outspoken like me, so they whacked. They got him off of there. Because he called a duck a duck. People ain't getting saved. People ain't getting converted. That's why there is this falling away. That's why there is this departing. And people are so scared to say the word homosexuals. They're so afraid to say the word sodomites. The Bible, God says, put them out. Right. You don't teach it to your kids. You get rid of them. 
Yeah, we don't kill people no more, but shame on them. You can shame them if their own families would turn their backs on them instead of saying, oh, it's okay, honey. They would seek help. They would see their sickness. But instead, you've got a president. God rest Martin Luther King. He had a dream. He wanted white kids and black kids to sit and eat together. Bless God, I do too. Their dream was realized. Obama's got a dream. He wants your little white boy and your little black boy to marry one another. Wickedness. Wickedness. And it's all over our television stations. And if somebody speaks out and says something, they are crucified. Enough is enough. They want to get dirty. The time's winding down. I'm ramping up. You know when we were training, when, 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 we, when we used to do sorties, and, and we were training for an upcoming mission, as that mission got closer, our training intensified. They started leaning us down and making us meaner and harder. You know what? The battle is coming. The battle is raging. And I'm trimming down and I'm going to lean it up and my training is going to intensify. If it's a fight they want, it's a fight they're going to get. Because I'm going to declare the truth. God said homosexuality is an abomination. If God says it, I'm on his side. And it ain't me saying it. It's God saying it. Put him on trial. Put God on trial. Let's see how that shakes out for them. Put Christ on trial. Oh yeah, they did. He won. He won. Leviticus 18. This whole chapter, this whole chapter, now be careful. Now if, you, if you're young and you're tender and if you, if, if, if you, if you, if you get offended by the truth, Put some cotton swab, put something in your ears. Because you're about to read all kind of garbage. Not garbage from the Word of God, but garbage in people's lifestyles. It would not have to be addressed if people did not do it. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and saying to them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt wherein you dwelt, shall you not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall you not do. Neither shall you walk in their ordinances. You shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. The same thing he says in every other book. He wants you to know who the Lord God is. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. None of you shall approach to any that is near of kin to him to uncover their nakedness. I am the Lord. He says nobody that's kin to you. You should not even peek on your brother or your sister without clothes on. That's why I make it a big deal at my house. Get out of here. Bubba's in the shower. Sister's in the bath. Get out. Don't come in here. Because if you look upon your brother or your sister, your mother or your father, you have uncovered their nakedness. I know people that shower with their kids. Stop it! You're uncovering their nakedness. You are defiling that child. I didn't say it. He said it. I'm just being loud with it. If my book could talk, I'd let it talk. Verse 7. The nakedness of thy father or the nakedness of thy mother shalt thou not uncover. She is thy mother. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Youngins, if your mama's getting dressed and her door's open, walk by with your eyes closed. Do not look on your mama. I don't care how old you are. Don't look on your mother naked. It's what God said. It's what God said. Demons will use that for unnatural things. Demons will get a hold to the, uh, that situation. He'll have you molesting your brothers and your sisters. Hey, God covers it. God covers it. Let's read on. Verse 8. The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. You know, if your daddy, if you see your daddy, if you see your daddy's wife, you, you might as well have seen your daddy. You uncovering your daddy's nakedness too. God didn't miss nothing. Verse 9. The nakedness of thy sister. 
the daughter of thy father or daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness shalt thou not uncover. Brothers and sisters, don't look at one another without no clothes on. I see innocent. They're children. Hogwash! God said don't do it. If God said don't do it, don't do it. It's not innocent. The demons are there. The demons are waiting to pounce. They want opportunities like that because they've got the televisions controlled, brother. They've got the television. They're already programming their minds. And they've got the schools controlled. They're already programming their minds. So if the devil can get you tricked into looking at your brothers or your sisters or your mamas or your daddies naked and having ill thoughts, you think he won't do it? You better believe he will. There have been more cases of incest there was a singer, he got kicked out of Britain. The boy could flat out play a piano. He's from down there around the same place where Swagger and all the kid cousins to Mickey Gillian and Swagger, Jerry Lee Lewis. He married his 14 year old cousin. Incest. Uncovered her nakedness. Ruined that girl. Ruined that girl. But you know what? Back in those days, before Britain kicked God out of Britain, they got there in England. They, they kicked him out of England because he did marry his 14-year-old cousin. Nowadays, hey, in England, man, they say, hey, everything's open in England. You go to Europe. If anybody travels to Europe, I just about have to question your sanity. You get off of the, I'm not kidding. You go to the airport, they've got full pictures of folks with no clothing on. Not just folks with no clothing on, but folks that are engaged in activities in the airports. And you want to go visit that. And brag about the fact that you've went and visited that. Cesspools. Cesspools. I'm glad to live in the backwaters of the deep south in the heart of Dixie where we are at least protected from a lot of this garbage. And where they steal enough godly fearing people were the freaks that would walk around that would want to do incest and that would want to defile your children in an unnatural way. At least if they're not hidden, they know what will come to them if they get caught. That's all I'm saying. Let one of them touch my children. Then they'll have something on me. The nakedness of thy sons, daughters, or, 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 that, or the nakedness, even their nakedness, thou shalt not uncover, for theirs is thine own nakedness. The nakedness of thy father's daughter, begotten of thy father, she is thy sister. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's sister. She is thy father's near kinswoman. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister. She is thy mother's near kinswoman. He covers them all. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy father's brother. Thou shalt not approach to his wife. She is thine aunt. He's talking about incest, molestation. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy daughter-in-law. She is thy son's wife. Thou shalt not uncover her nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy brother's wife. It is thy brother's nakedness. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter. Neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness. For they are her near kinswomen. It is wickedness. Neither shalt thou take a wife to her sister to vex her, to uncover her nakedness. Beside the other... In her lifetime. Meanwhile, she's alive. You don't marry a sister. Also, thou shalt not approach unto a woman to uncover her naked as long as she is put apart for her uncleanness or for her ministration. While a woman is going through her ministration cycle during a month, stay away from her. Blood defiles. I won't even cook a steak with blood in it. Blood defiles. The life of the flesh is in the blood. God said, you eat the blood you cut off from his people. I don't follow the Mosaic law. I'm free in Christ Jesus, but there's certain things I ain't going to do. I ain't serving blood. I ain't eating blood. So if you like steaks, you can come to my house to eat a steak, but you ain't getting more blood dripping out of it. Paint, paint can get, no blood. Moreover, thou shalt not lie carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her. And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, 
Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Now there's a whole message right there in letting your seed pass through the fires of Molech. We do it nowadays and call it abortion, but that, that's, that's another thing. We might touch on that tonight. We're talking about today's sexual sins, forbidden practices, things that defile, that damn, that cause the land to vomit up its own inhabitants. They wonder why we have an increase in hurricanes. They wonder why we have an increase in earthquakes. They wonder why we have an increase in tornadoes. They wonder why we have an increase in floods and forest fires. You tell me the land is trying to get rid of the sick, wicked people that is running up and down in it. Amen. The land itself knows better. So the Bible says... I'm making a lot of friends out there today. I know that I am. There's a lot of lily-livered preachers out there that want to pat your head and tell you you tithe your seed in here. Your seed's the Word of God. Don't tithe, don't tithe your money in here. If you want to send money to Living Waters Bible Church, send, send money to Living Waters Bible Church. You can tell we ain't living off of it. We giving it away. It ain't ours. We don't want it. You want to sow a seed? Say a prayer for us. Amen. You want, to see a, you want to sow a seed for somebody? Spread the gospel to them. Tell them you love them. Sowing seeds. They've turned the gospel. They're, they're making merchandise of it. They ain't preaching the truth. These preachers, the homosexual pastors in the pulpits are marrying the same sexes. And somehow they have they violated law one and two. They've created gods in their own image. They've created gods to suit them. My God won't. Because God is love. God is the source of love. God is the source of war. God is the source of peace. God is the source of evil. God is the source. God creates all things. God is love does not describe God. That is one of his infinite attributes. We got to wake up, people. The same God we're serving now is the same God that breathed these words through the Holy Spirit of truth. He changes not. Neither shalt thou lie with... No, verse 22, he touches on homosexuals. Neither shalt thou lie with, it, or with, it, with mankind as with womankind. What's he say about it? It's an abomination. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast. To defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. He's talking about bestiality. People do it. They make videotapes of it and send them all over the world. People are doing it today. People did it then. People do it today. Unnatural effects with animals. How depraved can you be? There's a commercial on about this local motel that's coming up. I think it's even called 666 or something. Where they're letting goats and stuff out of the hotel rooms. What are they insinuating? They're pushing it in your face. And it's time you pushed back. We get rolled over because we get rolled over. Because we've listened to so many spineless pastors that tell you not to rock the boat. Be a Peter. Get out the boat. Amen. Forget the boat. Get out of the boat. If it rocks the boat, so be it. Wake somebody up. Somebody is living these lifestyles and thinking it's okay. Somebody's taking baths with their brothers and sisters. And up to this point, it could probably be innocent. They didn't know. Now you know. Now you know. Don't do it. Don't do it. Defile not ye, verse 24, defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. For in all these, the nations are defiled which I cast out before you. God said, that's why I got rid of them heathens, so that you could come in. That's why I told you not to mix with those other breeds, because they're going to bring their gods, their fornications, their debauchery, right into your house. God said, that's why I got rid of them. So why you won't start doing it? You shall therefore, uh, verse 22, look, underline this. And the land is defiled. Highlight, underline, circle it. The land is defiled. Therefore do I visit 
the iniquity or the sins therefore, thereof upon it, and the land itself vomiteth out her inhabitants. Why? The land's defiled. The land is fighting back. The land don't even like it. The land knows full well that a man don't go with a man. And why are people so wickedly depraved minded to think that you can get a round hole in a square peg? Or a square peg in a round hole. The way God has created man and woman tells the story. You can be trapped somewhere and never have seen anything. Never have seen another person, never have seen a television, never have seen a telephone, never have seen a car, never have seen humanity. And you can see a woman and a man that's also lost. And you're going to go straight to that woman. Because even in your ignorance and your unlearning, your bodies tell you, you fit together. I know adult situation, adult commentary. We're living in a, this is a, this is a life and death matter. This is a life and death matter. This is stuff you can't tiptoe around. This is stuff that Paul said, I declared unto you the whole counsel of God. Not just the stuff that makes you feel good. All of it. We got to know this. We got to know how to defend it. We got to know how to take it to our family members that are trapped in these lifestyles. They're trapped in these lifestyles. And they can't escape. Because they don't realize they have demonic possessions over their houses. Maybe inside themselves. They don't realize it. They don't see the error of the way. And besides that, they've got a man with a cloth on his neck telling them, It's okay, child. Because he's the same way. It's not okay. It's not okay. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments and shall not commit any of these abominations. Neither of any of your own nation, nor any stranger that sojourneth among you. For all these abominations had the men of the land done, which were before you, and the land is defiled. That, he tells you why, verse 28, that the land spew not you all out also, when you defile it, as it spewed out the nations that were before you. For whosoever shall commit any of these abominations, even the souls that commit them shall be cut off from among their people. Therefore shall you keep my ordinances, that you commit not any of these abominable customs which were committed before you, and, you defi- and that you defile not yourselves therein and the Lord your God. He said that they cut off from their people. So how do you get a homosexual to straighten up? Excommunicate them. Don't tell them it's okay and let them sit down and break bread with you and drink your wine. Put them out. They're my daughters. Put her out. You didn't do something right when you was raising her. Maybe you should have been reading her these words. They're my son. Maybe you should have been reading them these words. They're my brother. Maybe you should have been reading them these words. Just because they're mother, brother, son, daughter, husband, wife, it don't matter. God comes first. I said if you ain't willing to forsake them for me, you ain't worthy of my, uh, to be my disciple. You can't begin to be his disciple till you're willing to get rid of everything else that goes against him. Then you can become his disciple. That's what he says. That's what Jesus says. Leviticus chapter 19. <laughs> we were talking about these earlier. Uh, look at verse 26. You shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall you use enchantment or observe times. What's he talking about? These wizards. Warlocks. You ever eat at a Chinese buffet restaurant? When they come and hand you them fortune cookies, give them back to them. Give them back them fortune cookies. I don't need a fortune cookie. My story's told. My story's told. I don't ever eat them fortune cookies. They look at me like I'm crazy. I don't want you a fortune cookie. I got my story told. My story's told right here for me. If I direct the Lord, if I acknowledge Him in all that I do, He will direct my path. And if I stay straight and if I hear that still small voice telling me to the left or to the right, I'll be on the right track. Whenever I get myself in trouble, I've done it, not God. It's not because I don't serve an inadequate God. It's because I'm a sinful human. And I get my own self in a pickle, not because God or not because I didn't follow a fortune cookie. He said in verse 20, 31, Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. My little youngin, she likes to smurse. We were watching it the other night. They're all wizards. 
They're all wizards concoction this stuff. The Bible says stay away from that. They're wizards. Enchantments. Familiar spirits. You touched on it this morning. They seem so subtle. It's a kid's cartoon. They're programming them to get in the mindset that wizards and warlocks and sorcery and necromancy and sex with the dead and communicating with the dead. Hey, it's all good. Whatever makes you happy, right? You got a right to feel good. You got a right to live life your way. You got a right to serve your king because he's coming back fast. And if you lined up on the wrong side of him, beloved, it ain't going to be good. It ain't going to be good. You got a right, all right. You got a right to serve your king, whatever bitch you got. Mind, soul, strength, every every single thing. Heart, soul, mind, and strength. Every, every fiber. You covered it. That's everything. Everything. You got to work. Sure, you got to work. I'm not talking about not working. But I'm talking about glorifying God while you're there. There's all kinds of people going to come across you that you can speak to. You know... Chapter 20, he, he talks about it. He, he says, he's talking about these people passing the, 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 their babies through the fire in Leviticus 20. And, you know, and, and, and here, here, here's, here's the damning passage to this whole set of scriptures right here. This is where the rubber meets the road. Because he's been talking about all these sins. I don't do that. I don't do that. I ain't done that. Okay. Let's say you don't. Let's say nobody in here does this. But tell me if this one applies. Verse 4. And if the people of the land do in any ways hide their eyes from the man when he giveth of his seed unto Moloch and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off and all that go a horn after him to commit whoredom of Moloch from among the people. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and wizards to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. Sanctify yourselves therefore and be ye holy for I am the Lord your God. So, you might not do none of those things. Do you hide your eyes? She's my cousin so I can't say nothing. My brother so I can't say nothing. She's my sister, so I can't say nothing. Do you hide your eyes? Because if you hide your eyes, you're just as guilty. So says the Word of God. So says the Word of God. Can you feel it? Can, 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 can you feel it? Can you feel the powerful finger of the Holy Spirit of God pressing down upon you, stirring you to move? Boy, I sure can. If you can't, you might need to check yourselves. Time's running out. This is what Matt Christ said. Matthew. <laughs> I'll read you another passage while you turn to Matthew. You can turn to Matthew chapter uh, 12 and I'll be right there. This is a recurring theme throughout the Word of God. In the book of Kings, when Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, he began to reign in Judah, he said there were sodomites in the land. And they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And you know what he did? You know what he did? He took away the sodomites out of the land and he removed all the idols that his fathers had made. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. He got rid of them. He got rid of them. You know how you get rid of them? You shame them! You shame them! That's how you get rid of them. Preach them the gospel. We're in the dispensation of grace. We don't kill people. We don't kill people. But you can get rid of people if there's a homosexual, demon-possessed man or woman in your town and you show them and when they come by you tell her, God loves you, Jesus loves you, they'll leave. You can get rid of them. They'll leave. They ain't going to stay nowhere where they get into God all the time. Don't preach to me. Well, leave, baby, because I'm going to preach. Leave. Don't twinkle toe yourself over here because if you twinkle, you, t if you, you, you got sugar in your tank around me, I'm going to say something. It's my responsibility. Do I like it? No. Would I like to hide my eyes? Yes. I'd like to get along with everybody else too. I'd like for everybody to love me and think I was the best thing since sliced bread. But instead, hate and reproach is the dish that served for us. 
So be it. I know the ending of the story. You can hate, you can reproach, you can backbite, you can undermine, you can do whatever you want to do in this life. When that roll is caught up yonder, I'll be there. That I know without a shadow of a doubt. Not because of me, because of him, and because of what he has done. Christ said, because so many people, you remember, you, you remember the story well, but it's not, it's not, it's not the story of the unwashing hands. That, that he, it's what Jesus says. Because you remember his disciples, they, they, they won't eat with them. Then they say, they're eating with unwashing hands. They're nasty. They, 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 ain't, they, ain't even, they ain't even washing their hands. They're defiling themselves. And you know what Christ said? And, and, I, want you, and I, want, I want you to levy this, what Christ said. And I want you to think about it. Every time you have made a statement sticking up for homosexuals, every time you have made a statement sticking up for those bestiality, for those that practice incest, for those that do familiar spirits and hey, it's just a horoscope and it's just a fortune cookie. For every little excuse you make, every little word that you said, that's what I want you to glean from this passage. Listen close. Jesus, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Beloved, are you justified or are you condemned? There's room at the cross for you. You have to forsake your sins, confess your sins. God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. The words that you speak, they matter. The things that you say, they matter. Have your words condemned you or have your words justified you? It's time when you walk out of here today and I might have got under somebody's skin and I promise you, I don't do it on purpose. This is a passionate message we're living in the last days. This is serious business. People are going to hell for eternity. Don't be one. Questions or comments?